Hey there, Rob Lyons here with you, bringing you another review. This time we're looking at something a little bit different. We're looking at the Starfleet Bomber Jacket from New American Jackets together with some of the accessories. If you need to go on a landing party, I think we found the outfit for you. All right, we're gonna go ahead now and uh, focus in on the jacket and accessories. So the jacket itself, there are two options. One is a cotton option. That is not the version that I got. This is the suede option. These come from New American Jackets. And um, so this is suede trimmed with leather. And the suede is dyed. Now you will want to protect this with a protectant. Uh, like a kiwi waterproofer or something like that so that the suede doesn't bleed significantly. Um, it is still going to bleed a bit. You will wind up seeing on some of the white areas, such as your rank stripe here um, or the commendation stripe, you'll see, uh, especially down here where it, it rubs up against the side. And some simple, um, you may even notice there's just a few hints there, I did recently clean it with shaving cream of all things. And so that will take care of some of that. Um, the jacket itself is fully functional in the sense that there is uh, there are two pockets on the outside. And there are two pockets located on the inside, which you can hopefully see there. And it has a viscose lining. so. Um, I will tell you, this has been a daily wear jacket for me since, uh, Christmas time when I got it. And, uh, I don't wear it on days of inclement weather. So no rain and no snow. Uh, I don't want to run the risk of the jacket bleeding any. Um, but this jacket, it's comfortable. I live in Indiana. Our temperatures, um, this time of the year are in the mid thirties, typically to maybe the forties. Um, I've worn this down into the teens and have been generally comfortable. Um, I probably wouldn't wear it much lower than that, but I could see myself wearing this from late September through, you know, early May, um, and it will definitely make an appearance at Wonderfest in June. So in terms of the jacket, let's talk about, um, if you will, some of the inaccuracies. And I want to be very clear, none of the inaccuracies bother me in the slightest. First, on the screen used jacket, these snaps are silver, not brass or golden colored. So that's inaccuracy number one. I just don't care. <laughs> um, on the cotton fabric jacket, my understanding is those snaps are black. So just so that you're aware. The second thing you'll notice, this seam. I'm not sure I understand. <laughs> sorry, my watch there. This seam should be about an inch lower with the insignia space drop down and with the rank strap drop down. Again, I don't care. It, it, it For me, it does not at all detract um, from the appearance of the jacket. This isn't really an inaccuracy as it is a... Um, um, making do with, with what the design is. You know, pe they don't know what rank people are going to choose for this. And so you have here uh, no rank pillow for the insignia to go on. You know, if you had a captain's pin, it would need to be longer. The admiral's pin, this is a fleet admiral's pin. It needs to be a bit bigger than some of the other smaller ones like a, an ensign or a lieutenant. So there is no rank pillow. However, my understanding is you can request a scrap of fabric to be included uh, at no additional charge in your order, and they will uh, do that. And there are some instructions on how to make a rank pillow. On the back of the jacket, the other thing that you may notice is there is no action pleat, uh, not a significant one. This seam here on the screen used version is an action pleat that allows a little more freedom of movement in theory. I've not had the slightest issue with that at all. So for me, these inaccuracies do not at all detract from the, the jacket itself. All right, let's talk about some of the accessories now. I'm gonna start with the insignia. 
So here's our Starfleet insignia on this particular jacket. This is from Jeff Parks. He's better known as Park Sabres um, on, online. And so he doesn't advertise these on the Parks Sabres site, but he is on sites like the RPF. I think he's on Facebook and you can kind of track him down. Um, this is uh, quite simply the most fantastic film era insignia pin I've ever owned. Um, it comes in a set of two pins. The other pin that you get with it is a um, Strange New Worlds cast metal insignia pin. And you can either get this version, which is um, the Kirk version that includes the Kirk, um, it, it would include a command insignia from TOS, or you can get the Uhura version where the um, arrowhead or the, the delta, if you will, is a darker copper, almost a brown copper color. The background is more of a white or maybe a bone color as opposed to this more creamy uh, custardy type color. Um, and then you, the, uh, uh, the Strange New Worlds logo you get has the engineering logo on it as well. So they, they come as a set. Th like I said, best um, insignia I've ever purchased from this era. So that's from Park Sabres. So let's move on over to um, the next couple of items were all purchased through an Etsy store called Tyler's Etc. So this is the Fleet Admiral rank pin. And hopefully you can see that really beautiful detail. Not only do we have the um, arrowhead or the arrow pins, uh, arrow portions, there's the star in the middle, the dots, the little lozenges that go all the way around, kind of forming a bit of a wreath. Um, this does lead me to point out another slight inaccuracy. This strap should be a little bit wider. Um, it will not be an issue for the captain's pins or, or you know, say a commander or an ensign because it'll be the right width for those. Um, but it is an issue for these admiral's pins because they are a bit wider. My understanding is you can ask New American Jackets to make some changes to this. And I would really recommend if you're going to explore this, um, I would recommend joining the Monster Maroon Facebook group. Several folks on there have had work done on their jackets through New American Jackets, uh, then, and they've been quite happy. And there are also other sources of jackets out there that they can talk to you about. The other Tyler's Etc. items, obviously here's the other Fleet Admiral's pin, are the pips and squeaks for the length of service, the commendations. You know, everybody, I think, kind of has a little different take on these. Um, really, really nice. As you can tell, they have the grooving to them. So that's really good. Um, I'm going to step back up to the Admiral's pin. My only complaint with the Admiral's pin is it only has a single pin. And so um, I would prefer it to have two pin backs so it doesn't rotate. But uh, I have made a change to all of my pins. And let me see if I can show you. I have used, I went on Amazon and bought these rubber pin backs that you can hopefully see in there. There we go. And I bought a package of those for like $4. And that's improved all of the pins. All right. So that's the pins. Again, the rank and the um, commendations came from an Etsy shop called Tyler's Etc. Final thing I want to talk about is the buckle. All right, so here is the buckle. Um, there are several buckle options available. If you want a solid metal, it's a cast aluminum one that's highly polished. It's great work. Scott Nakata, who is uh, uh, on Facebook, you can look him up. Um, uh, he's a member of several Star Trek costuming groups and everything. He he produces buckles on a limited run basis that are just outstanding. Um, my thing is, I don't like the screen used appearance with the little kind of the in the middle here. There's this like gold catch. I just don't think it looks good. I, it, I honestly, I think it looks unfinished. And so um, Will Fowler, who is best known for modeling uh, from the incense chair on uh, YouTube. Uh, he's also a member of many different modeling groups in particular on Facebook. Uh, he announced back in the fall that he was going to do a 3D printed um, 
option. And he has a screen accurate 3D printed option. I happen to mention that I didn't like it and that I wonder, you know, could the device in the middle of the buckle be different? Well, this is a, a, some inspiration that he took from that request. And so here you go. This is, um, this is the buckle. Now, this is 3D printed resin, and this comes with the caveat. It is not intended for daily use. He will tell you that over and over again. I am disregarding that on purpose. Now, you'll notice, as of this morning, so far, I only notice one itty-bitty scratch. And I've been wearing this all but two days in the last week since I got the buckle. The buckle simply is um, its kind of a spring-loaded catch. You undo it. There's a tab that fits into a slot. It's going to be really hard to do this with one hand and hold the camera, so I may not be able to get this rebuckled quite right. Um, but then the this is spring-loaded. The, um, the insignia is spring-loaded so that if you push here, it will catch on this catchment here. So let's see if I can't get this back together with... Yeah, one-handed getting it back together is probably not going to work very well. So then um, you have to, to take advantage of this, you have to make sure that you order the option where it has the detachable um, snap flap for the buckle. These buckles run uh, 40 a piece, or, uh, or I think it's 40, 40 a piece plus shipping, or um, I think you might be doing a special where if you buy two buckles, the shipping is included. So um, find Will on uh, Facebook. He'll get you taken care of. Um, again, this buckle is not intended for daily wear. I am taking a risk by doing it that way. But I'm going to tell you something. I, this is the second one of these jackets I bought. I'm going to tell you why in a few moments. Um, the first one, I did not get this option. I did not realize how much this added to the overall look of the item until I had it on. All right, so we're back. Let me give you a final few thoughts here about the uh, new American jacket. I mentioned a moment ago that this is the second jacket that I've purchased. Um, I've purchased the first jacket um, in October, and it was shipped. I knew I was taking a little bit of a chance in going ahead and ordering a standard size jacket. Um, I just, my belly is a little different. You know, I, I do have some weight here, working to get rid of it, but, um, and it fit, but it was really tight. Um, and sometimes if I would twist in a certain way, um, one of the snaps would pop. The other issue that I had with the jacket was the sleeves were too long. The sleeves actually came down to um, the, not past the knuckles and down to the next set of, of joints in the hand. It was just too long. I didn't want to roll it up and everything like that. So I actually had a friend came over, tried it on, it fit him. Um, so he took that one off of my hands and I went ahead and ordered a new jacket. Now, if you want to order a custom size jacket, there is an additional $40 fee for that. And I was more than willing to pay that. Um, when this came back, it was spot on. It took longer because I did ask for customization of the size. And as I mentioned earlier, there are some customization options that are apparently offered. Um, and I would strongly encourage you to join the Monster Maroon Facebook group in order to learn more about those. There's been a lot of posts in the last eight months about this jacket and similar jackets. Um, there are some other versions of the jacket available. Obviously, they've got a cotton version. If you want to hear a review of the cotton version, Stuart Foley did a good review of it and of this one uh, on his channel. Uh, not Trek Yards, I don't, I don't think. I think it's on his personal channel, so look him up on YouTube. Um, there's a part of me that would probably consider the cotton jacket. Um, I'm guessing it probably wouldn't have the same bleed issues. You are going to need to treat this jacket on a regular basis. Um, I've never owned a jacket like this in my life. I am so thrilled and it is, it is such, it's been in such great shape, um, for basically being my daily wear jacket. 
Um, I've really enjoyed it. I've had a chance to wear it out to some fun things, but I also wear it to work every day, uh, unless, like I said earlier, it's raining or whatever. Um, there is a very inexpensive version of the jacket that's available from Cozermart. It doesn't really look that good to me. Um, and then if you want the Primo, um, I believe it's Starbase 375 Logistics makes an outstanding. Um, and this is no slam on New American because this is a great jacket. Um, but it is it, the one from Starbase 375 Logistics just takes it over the top. It's a purely custom sized item. It's custom assembled um, one at a time. You're, you're going to pay premium money for it, but it's a great jacket. I love this jacket. I love my Park Sabres insignia. I love my Tyler's, etc. rank pins and pips and squeaks. And I love Will Fowler's buckle. Even though it's not intended for daily use. Will, you can't say I didn't tell them. This jacket is quite honestly one of my favorite pieces of Star Trek fandom I have ever owned. And a great thing to conclude it with, and you saw it in my opening, I had the uh, the hat on. Um, I use Vistaprint to make hats uh, for different ships. And so you could do that as well. I'm actually looking to see if I can't source a more maroon color um, hat and do a new jack or new new hat for a new ship and everything. Well worth your investment. Um, this is going to be great fun. I'm looking forward to bringing it to IPMS um, Indy in early April. I'm looking forward to bringing this to Wonderfest this year. Uh, I highly encourage you, if you're looking for um, this jacket, this is a great option. And I'll be honest, this may be the only way I wind up getting myself into something in the Monster Maroon family. I don't know that I'm ever going to be able to spend the cash to pick up something other than this. Um, I may look at Cozermark for the pants and update them so they're admirals to go along with the jacket, as well as Cozermark does have a um, undershirt that may work very well, um, the, the tunic underneath. But in terms of like the, the, the primo thing, I may never go beyond this. And you know what, if that's the case, I'll, I'll be okay with that because this is an outstanding piece of Trek memorabilia, and it will, at least so far, <laughs> my opinion is it's going to last you if you're wearing it on a day-to-day -day basis. If you found this review helpful, please like and subscribe. I've got more model reviews coming up, space shuttle build videos and things like that that'll be coming down the pike. Um, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you own one of these? How have you enjoyed yours? What special changes did you make? Um, are you thinking about it? Is there a question that I didn't answer for you? Um, that you would like to have answered. If so, please drop a comment. I'm happy to respond to you. And until next time, live long and prosper.